Welcome to Battle School Dropouts. We're here again to talk about six more episodes of an anime. Uh, I'm Stu, and joining me is... I'm Bakari. Hello. Hello. And uh, this week we watched six episodes of Keep Your Hands Off, Isaacin. Yeah, this was, uh, this was a really neat one. Like, I knew it was going to be good because I watched the first episode a while back, like when it first aired, but... I mean, I'm just pulling up, I'm putting my hair in a bun right now because I'm about to suck this show off for like an hour when we get into it. I really, <laughs> really loved it. I know. It's one of those things where it's like, like when we talked about starting this podcast, it's like, well, I don't want to talk about anything that everybody like already knows is great. Like, like it's probably not worth it to talk about like Evangelion or whatever. Yeah. But uh, anybody who knows anime knows that this show is great, but I don't know. I still want to talk about it. It's great. No, totally. <laughs> like this is, it, it's, it's, we get the worst of both worlds because it's something that like everybody knows about and like has talked about and, and they were talking about it several months ago. So we are so, so, yeah. so late to the game. Well, and I guess we should talk about, uh, for anybody who just kind of heard the last episode out of context, like, we recorded that back in, like, I want to say, like, February uh, or something. It was, it was March 8th, because we okay. in, we were talking about Doom and Animal Crossing, and we mentioned that it was it was coming out in 12 days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that, that episode dropped whenever it dropped, and it has now been, like, two or three months since then. And boy, has the world changed yeah. in the last two months. Like, we were, we had, I think we were, you know, seeing that it was March and stuff like that. Like, coronavirus, we knew about it. Um, fuck, I just got us demonetized on YouTube. Um, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> all of our money. Well, good thing we have so many Patreon subscribers. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, and these curse words wouldn't have uh, stopped us either. So. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Um, yeah, so, like, coronavirus was starting to be a thing, and we were like, gosh, it sure is crazy out there, and now, you know, it's a couple months later, we are in our own homes because we can no longer see each other, we, we live, like, a block <laughs> away, but we may as well be on other sides of the planet. Yeah, no, exactly, and it's, it's, it's one of those things that, like, keeps catching me off guard, where it's like, well, Bakri just lives down the street, like, I'll just go hang out, and it's like, well, no, that's not really how things work these days, Yeah, so. yeah, it's, it's weird, like, having these conversations about, like, hey, can so-and-so, like, come over to grab something? And we have to talk about, like, weighing the risks. Like, we're in, like, a fucking zombie apocalypse and somebody needs to go to the drugstore or something. Like, it's... Yeah. It's really no, you guys, strange. You guys are... I, I guess there, there's a couple more of you living in the house mm -hmm. than over here. Like, uh, me and my roommate, Tim, we, we have a... We are not as good about it as we should be. Oh, but really? we're still, like, you know, like, we make an effort. Like, we're not, like, inviting people over all the time. Sure, but, like, sure. We've definitely had a couple of guests over. Like, my girlfriend has come over and visited and whatnot. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I'm sure with, like, a lot of those relationships where, like, people don't live together. Like, you know... It's, it's silly of me to expect, you know, people to be, like, 100%, like never see your significant other for what could potentially be another like year or something like that you know what i mean yeah exactly and uh, i mean looking at the numbers things are better but i don't know i i don't have any stock in 2020 getting better no no not at this point i'm just happy we made it like almost halfway through i turn i turn 29 in a week and uh then that's i it. then i can just die that's that's my plan. Yeah, the, the, you're good. Cause then you don't have to hit thirty and all that. Yeah. yeah, like even if I have the virus now, like I can probably still make it to my 29th birthday and then be good. Yeah, you're golden. Yeah, you're golden. Solid. Yeah, I turn I turn thirty in a couple months, and I was thinking about it the other day. Like, oh, like cause I I like to do stuff on my birthday. Yeah, and I'm uh, like I'm a big birthday guy, and I was thinking like, oh, what do I want to do for my birthday? I could invite people over, and we could do like a land party, or we could do this. And I was like, oh, wait, hold on. No one can come over. We're not doing shit. We're not doing a guy. I mean, we could, we could maybe like play a video game online. You wanna, you wanna jump yeah. on some, you know, whatever. We can do that. Yeah, and uh, and like that happened like, like, like I realized that like a month ago or so, and it looks like it'll like everybody will probably still be indoors come July. Likely, but it's like so. Like I've got ideas, but it's just like oh man, there's all these things. Just keep catching me off guard. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's the, it's our, this is our post-apocalypse scenario. We don't get anything cool. <laughs> no robots, no aliens, no nothing like that. It's just, you know, some dumbasses keep going to the mall and to the beach and shit. And so we all have to stay inside because, like, people are dying of, you yeah. know, uh, a big sickness thing. And not even a cool one where, like, your eyes bleed or anything. It's just, you know, <laughs> shitty. Well, okay, so it's been a couple months. It's, it, like, we haven't even really, like, we've hung out. We've been doing stuff with, like, friends online. Yeah. But you and I haven't really hung out that much. 
Yeah, not really. How are you doing? What, what's going on? Uh, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm working from home, and I'm playing video games at home, and I'm cooking at home, and it's I'm watching movies. It's great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I realized, you know, I, I was talking to a friend the other day, and he was like, yeah, what's new with you, man? I was like, I don't know. I just beat my friend Pedro. That's it. Like, I have nothing else to say about my life. I haven't left the, the house in, like, two fucking months. But, I mean, yeah, as far as far as far as things are going, it could be far worse. So how about you? Um, up until a couple days ago, I was getting, I was getting real pessimistic Mm. because, so I worked on campus and my, with school being closed, it was like, okay, well there goes that job. (laughs) And then also, uh, it's looking like, uh, the school is going to be closed through fall. Oh man. So I was like, and I should say like, it's not closed. It's like virtual online shit instead of, you know, on class. So, but I... I have an AV tech on campus, and if there's no events, yeah. then they don't need me. There's so no audio like, or video to do, unless they're, like, broadcasting and they need your help with that, I guess. Exactly, but that's not really happening. Or at least, like, not a thing that, like, my job covers. Sure. So it's like, okay, well, so I'm out of job, and I'm going to... And I loved the job. It was a great job. That sucks. And I was like... And so I'm just going to be out for the rest of the year. And tactical on top of that, I couldn't sort out unemployment. Like, I, I did the unemployment, I went through all the thing, and they sent me a letter that was like, yeah, here's your maximum return. It's zero dollars. Oh, what? It's like, oh, yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. And it, 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 I think it had to do, I was like an independent contractor oh. the year before, so there's issues there. But it, basically, it was like, it was that, it was like, I could like, I didn't get the stimulus check, I didn't get, like, anything, and I'm just like, so I was I was I was pretty down, but like literally as of like a couple days ago, unemployment got sorted out, and then today I got the stimulus. Oh, check. nice! So like, it's all coming Shit. in for me. Everything's coming up, Stu. <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeah. So it's it's honestly like it it it's just having like that little bit of security. I'm not out of the woods yet. I still got to pay taxes, and that's going to be a pain in the <laughs> sure. ass. But uh, yeah, it's. I'm feeling a little bit better. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you finally got, you know, the money the government owes you, like, way too late, but still. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, if things go wrong for a while, you know, I was able to live for a couple months. There you go. Uh, so I just got an extra couple months of unemployment tacked on to the end or something. There, you know? there it I is. I don't know. There it is. I, I don't know how unemployment works at all. Uh, me neither. I got... Like I said, they sent me like a zero, and then they sent me an email saying like, "Hey, you've been paid out. Like we paid you your zero dollars." <laughs> so obviously, I don't understand what I'm doing. They're gonna want that zero things... dollars back eventually, Stu. You got to be ready. We actually we we overpaid you. You owe us zero dollars, <laughs> buddy. You just got to send them a, a you know a letter. Nothing else in it. It just says, "Here you go," and then your debt <laughs> is repaid. Perfect. <laughs> uh so you've been watching reading playing anything recently besides you know uh, we do we do our online movie nights here and there but anything else um i have been what have i been doing so because i had like no income i played a lot of free to play games oh sure and i went down that rabbit hole and god damn there are so many just just tra- I, I didn't play one free to play game that i was like oh this is great like this is so good it was just a lot of like I'd play like 10, 20 minutes and I'd be like, oh, this is cool. And then 20 minutes later, I'm like, oh, it's just, it's just a clicker game. Like I'm just making a number bigger. Like, fuck. (laughs) I mean, it's a, it's, it's a proven structure. Like I have gotten sucked into those idle clicker games before, like 10 billion wives. Like that sounds silly, Mm -hmm. but like 10 billion, I mean, 10 billion wives with a B. I got to try it out. (laughs) Well, I got to hit 10 billion. Yeah. And God damn it. I did. (laughs) Well, you know what? We should we should follow up last week's uh, podcast or last time's podcast, not last week. Uh, we should follow up last time's podcast. I was excited about Doom. You were excited about Animal Crossing. Quite so. Let's get the reviews in. What do you think of Animal Crossing? Like two months later, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm big on it. You know, like it's it's. I, I had a pretty good idea of what I was getting. You know, going into it, and you know, other than like a shocking lack of. Um, like quality of life uh, features. It's it's just a wonderful time. It's it's exactly what I wanted, and um, yeah, it's great. I got I get to, you know, attend concerts by a singing dog and go fishing yeah. and sell turnips, and it's just great. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 a pretty good time. Like I played a little bit of it. Um, yeah, because your girlfriend, girlfriend had yeah. it. 
Yeah, and she she lets me play it, and we we had some fun the other day. Uh, if you like, I have a separate account on her Switch, mm-hmm. and so we're able to both hang out on her island at the same time. Oh, really? Yeah. So as long as you have two different controllers, you can both play at the same time. Like you share a screen, like you're playing like Baldur's Gate or something. I don't know. Oh, crazy! Um, so it's it's kind of cool, except whoever is not the leader. Um, and you can swap who the leader is, but whoever isn't the leader can't open their menu, can't talk to villagers, oh. like, you can't do a bunch of things. But it was still fun to run around with her and just be like, she's just showing me stuff, basically. That's that's so. interesting <laughs> that they put that in there, but then didn't let you do... It, it sounds like you can't really do anything. Like, you can't really go fishing or catch bugs or do anything that really, like, affects the world uh, around the, ma- the, the first player. So you can still, like, have tools out and... Um, you can like there's like a quick select tool button that lets you just kind of like go through them one at a time yeah. and so you can go through your tools that way so we were like trying to like if we saw a fish we'd each try to catch that fish oh okay. and that was a pretty good time um so you can still do stuff like that but like i couldn't open my menu to like put down furniture or uh change my clothes or anything like huh. that huh well it's, it's better than nothing and like I kept, I kept trying to talk to a villager that she wanted to talk me to talk to. She's like, "Oh, you're gonna like this character. They're really cute." And then I just kept hitting them with the bug uh, <laughs> catcher, like just. Wah, wah, wah. She's like, "Stop doing that!" I'm like, "I'm not trying to." They get they. Um, I think that's like. I don't know if this is actually a way to get villagers to move out. Like, it's kind of one of those things, like, you know, you're trying to catch a Pokemon and you hold up an A because when you were six, somebody told you that, like, increases your chances <laughs> of cap- catching them. Like, if, yes. if you want a villager to move out, I guess that's one way to do it is just, like, beat the shit out of them with, uh, with the fishing net or the, the bug catching net, rather. So, yeah. I mean, maybe maybe you'll chase them out of town. Who knows? Yeah, well, I don't think she wanted me to. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a particular villager. Uh, you've probably seen him, even though you probably don't follow like a lot of people who talk about Animal Crossing. But Raymond the cat. Um, yes. Yeah, he's got I, the, he's the heterochromatic like uh, cat with the with the glasses and the business suit and whatever. And mm-hmm. people are obsessed with that little fucker. I I kind of oh, yeah. don't get it. He looks like a dweeb. <laughs> <laughs> I follow because I. While I'm not, I don't play Animal Crossing, I think the game is absolutely, like, really well designed and absolutely adorable. Sure. So, like, I, I follow, like, every Animal Crossing meme I can, and, like, things will happen, I just send it to my girlfriend, like, explain this to me. Like, <laughs> what is this? What is, what is the frog chair? But, uh, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Raymond, but just, I don't know why. I, I'm just excited because other people are excited. I hate that little shit. People are like, so, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> Stu, there is a... The, I, I was about to call it human trafficking, but for obvious reasons, that's not really applicable. But there is a <laughs> villager trafficking system. You can, like, so uh, apparently when you when somebody's about to move out from your town, you can um, you can basically influence who they're going to go to. I think if, if somebody visits your town when, you're, when a villager is about to leave, like, there's a day where they'll, they'll have all their shit packed up in boxes and they're getting ready to move. If somebody shows up to your town, like another player, then I think the, the villager will or the, the villager will come to their town, like if they talk to him or something. So like you can basically sell uh, animals, oh. right? You can get them to move out and then get somebody else to visit and they'll move to their Island. Right. So like mm-hmm. Raymond goes for like legit millions and millions of bells, like crazy amounts. <laughs> he is the <laughs> highest value animal person to traffic right now. And I want him so bad just so I can be the biggest dick to him and then say, Raymond is in boxes, and then just not give him to anybody. (laughs) I want that so badly. Because I I saw a meme, and I didn't quite understand it. People were, it was like, basically like, everybody makes fun of Tom Nook for being like this capitalist monster. Sure. But then everybody, as soon as they can like sell stuff in Animal Crossing, becomes <laughs> capitalist monsters. Yeah, even worse. Like, okay, Tom Nook, like, you know, yeah, he's he's the analog for a landlord. But like, you show up penniless and he's like, oh, well, fuck, I guess you can have this house. Pay me back eventually. Like, he has you work for him for like a day, run some errands. And then he's like, yeah, just, you know, whenever you can afford it. I don't, I'm not tripping about it. And then, you know, when you do, he's like, yeah, you want me to upgrade your house? Yeah, sure. It's this much. Like, it's pretty reasonable. And then these people, on the other hand, it's like, let me take that person 
and I will give you millions of bells. <laughs> or like, rather, if you want me to sell you this living being, this person who has thoughts oh. and feelings, you know, diegetically, <laughs> then I'm going to need you to pay me an exorbitant sum because he has two different colored eyes and he makes a cute face. Yeah, I, I there, there is something that's very like, it, like Animal Crossing has a lot of status symbols in it. Just it does. Due to, like the rarity of items and different kinds of things like that. Absolutely. Um, it kind of is all status symbols, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot in that game that's like, oh, you need this in order to like do something like efficient. Right? No, very like, A little. lot of it is just buying like cute clothing or finding cute items and things like that. Yeah. Um, not to say that the game isn't fun like or cute. Oh, it's but, it's both yeah, of those <laughs> things in in excess. Yes, but yeah, there is definitely this darker side to it. Yeah, because like even you know this one this one's kind of a first in that it um it has like so many more functions as far as like you can customize your entire town as opposed to just like your house, right? And yeah. you know the idea is like oh people get to show off like what they like you know I'm into monster movies so I'm gonna have a Godzilla fighting a giant mech who need but like some people do that with really creative stuff like I built a city I built a you know like whatever and then other people like I feel like there's this again status to it where it's like yeah mine's full of these like really hard to get items that I got because I like played the the turnip market really well or sold a person for like a, a bajillion you know bells or something. <laughs> It's it's dark. Yeah, it's it's another good example of the the grim capitalist side of humanity. <laughs> Fuck this, man, Animal Crossing's not woke. It's not woke. God you damn know? it! But it but it's the perfect kind of like. Uh, there's a term from Red Letter Media, like uh, I I guess it doesn't quite apply, but like passive progressive, where it's like here's this really cute. Uh, thing like there can't be anything wrong with it right and then it's like no just right under the surface is like disney is this you know dark sort of side to it and i know disney isn't associated with animal crossing sure but like you know just like here's this cute thing in front and then right behind it is like this dark side i don't know maybe i'm being too hard on animal crossing because like they did uh they didn't put their workers under crunch or as hard of crunch and stuff like that while producing the game like that was why it got pushed back so that is good that they let people live their lives and make a video game. That's, you know, like, it, it sounds, you know, silly to say it, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of game devs who just kind of don't get to do both of those things at the same time. So, like, kudos to Nintendo, for sure. Mm-hmm. And, like, it, you're totally right in that, like, Nintendo, like, in a lot of ways, is kind of the Disney of video games, and... It's it's kind of it's upsetting to me because I don't give a fuck about Disney. Like I like Disney movies, but if they went out of business today, I'd be like, eh, all right. Um, <clears throat> but when it comes to Nintendo, like I know there's these like you know kind of dark practices that they that you know they're 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 so aggressive in their um, like suing emulator sites and stuff like that, like ruining people's mm-hmm. lives because they you know dared to hack Mario sixty four or whatever. And like <laughs> you just have to kind of turn an eye, like turn a blind eye to that because like. I just I like Mario and Zelda too much, man. I can't I can't be asked to like actually apply my ethics to the things that I consume. It's it, it's such a like daunting task of like let's say let's say Nintendo was like as bad as like I don't know like Disney or whatever. Like I don't I don't know I haven't dug too deep on Nintendo, but I think it's safe to assume that most big companies are bad. Yeah. But uh, like, what do you do at that point? Like, okay, well, I just won't buy Nintendo games. It's like, well, is that gonna really like? stop them like no like lots of people are still gonna buy sure. nintendo games so i i don't know what the solution is yeah but animal knows. crossing's cute animal so, crossing's a know. good old time <laughs> <laughs> um how how are you feeling about doom eternal by the way i love doom eternal to go to a lighter side of games <laughs> yeah. uh, doom eternal is really fun it's really cute um no i i doom eternal is fantastic but it is the first game that i have played where i where my computer's age is finally apparent where uh, I could not run the game on max settings. I could not. I basically, I had to kept chunking down like the settings to the point that it basically looks like an Xbox 360 game. Uh, there's, there's worse things to look like, you know? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but it was definitely like, uh, this, this game looks so good on <laughs> like everyone else's things. And then mine is just like, it looks like it was made 10 years ago. Right. <laughs> um, I, but no, the game. Yeah. Uh, I just, no, I ahead. just built a computer like. 
a couple weeks ago, but before that I was running like a pretty old one. And when Street Fighter V came out a few years ago, I tried to play that and I had to run it on like the bottom, bottom lowest settings possibly uh, possible. <laughs> and like it legit it you couldn't you couldn't make out a character's face. Like it was that oh, bad. Dude. Yeah. Well and like one of the problems I have uh at the current settings so I have two major problems. The first one is like things that are a little bit further away, I think to like compensate for graphics i don't know how video games work uh are a bit blurry so it's a little hard to tell like it, it kind of like stresses my eyes out a little bit because it's like okay there's all these things i need to pay attention to everything's trying to kill me mm -hmm. but okay what is that guy over there like what like you know like you can't focus on it because right it's um and then two so and this is the biggest one i i think the game's fantastic it's wonderful and i'm trying i was trying to beat it on uh nightmare mode mm-hmm I'm just I'm having some kind of issue where during a fight when a bunch of stuff is happening it will crash. Oh no. Not every time but it will crash. And in particular it crashes on the runs that I'm like pretty confident I'm going to win. Oh no. <laughs> like god so that sucks. I'll, I'll, I'll get into an arena, I'll get like just murdered four times and then on the fifth one, I'll, I'll run in. I'm like, I think I'm going to pull this off. Like, I'm taking these guys out. I got the patterns figured out. I'm doing all this stuff. <laughs> and then it crashes. I'm Jesus. like, no. And then I'll I'll quit the game, load it back up. It all comes back pretty quickly. And then I'll run through it again, get killed another four times. The fifth one, okay, I'm going to win. And then it crashes again. And I'm just like, I'm good. I'm I'm going to play Doom Eternal when I have a better computer. Oh, but man. I, I did manage to beat it like uh, on ultra violence or whatever. So I did beat the game. Oh, okay. And I got I got a good experience and I loved it. It was really really fun. Replaying it, I ran into some issues. That's so weird how just... like you, it doesn't sound like you really ran into any issues the first time on like ultra violence or whatever. I did. It's just like it I think it's that on nightmare mode and I'm I'm just guessing like it's throwing more enemies at you or the enemies are more complicated in their ai or something because they're like the the advanced enemies as opposed to like the little guys sure so it's just like it's too much for my computer to handle that uh, makes sense i built my computer like five or six years ago at this point and it was it was good for them but i didn't really understand computer parts as well as i do now and right. i cheaped out on a few different sections and I don't have the best processor, and I think that's what's messing me up. That that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, actually, like, now that I, you know, think about what I was saying for a second, like, yeah, it would make more sense, like, more enemies, more, you know, strain on the processor. So, like, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. I say this, like, yeah, yeah, I built my own computer, but, like, I don't really understand computers terribly well. So, like, for all I know, like, I, maybe I need to upgrade my graphics card, or I need to do this or that. I don't really know how computers work, but all I know is it doesn't run great. Yeah. So I'm playing other video games now. <laughs> I mean, I mean, P PCs are so easy to build nowadays. Like, I don't know shit about computers either, but, like, you know, I can, I can follow instructions easily enough. And, you know, ordinarily, I would have just brought all the parts to my friend's house who builds computers all the time and just, like, had him you know do it but like in in lieu of that i called him on the phone and had him like basically walk me through stuff and like answer any questions i had so like i'm right there with you like i don't know what the fuck is wrong with your game but i hope you get that i hope you do manage to beat nightmare mode eventually one day yeah, yeah and i i have plans i just have to have like a stable job at some point in my life sure. but that's yet to happen <laughs> once i once i have that then i'll be you know, and like a standard kind of income, like upgrading my computer is kind of high on my list. Sure. So, and that, and I think a big part of it is like, oh yeah, it'd be cool to be able to like do better stuff with like animation and um, design and stuff like that. But mostly I just want to play Doom Eternal on better settings. Yeah, <laughs> that was exactly the reasoning behind me putting this, this PT, PC together. Because originally it was like, oh, there's like, you know, some stuff like, you know, I, I make music in, in Ableton Live and... Um, you know, every once in a while, like, I'll have too many things running and it'll crash or whatever and I lose some pro progress and it sucks. And, like, so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little upgrade. I'm gonna get a, you know, a little more RAM or a new processor or something. And then that just turned into a whole new PC because I was like, well, if, <laughs> while I'm at it, you know, there's games coming out and I ain't got nowhere to be, so fuck, it might as well. Thousand dollars later, here we are. <laughs> PC gaming is such, like, a fucking rabbit hole these days, too, because everything comes out on PC oh, now, yeah. so it's just, like... Well, I want to play video games, and I want to play them in, like, good graphics and be able to use mods and things like that. Time to get a PC! Exactly. So. I just I just hopped on Game Pass, and, like, fuck, dude, there's so many games on that. It's, it's weird because their catalog is, like, it's all the games that I've been interested in trying but not enough to pay for. 
You know what I mean? And the, now it just happened. The Google No, Game this Pass, is the this or? is the Xbox one. Not not Stadia. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I have a story about that. Oh, do, that. do you? Yeah, go, go ahead. Um so so what is it? I don't actually know this. Oh, so so Xbox Game Pass is like um I mean it's it's as it sounds it's, it's uh, how do I put it? It's like it's basically just you pay a a, a subscription. I think right now you like your first month is is a dollar and then from then on it's like 5 or 10 depending on like what promotion they have going on. You know, it's available on Xbox and it has been for a while, but recently they made it available on PC. Um so you just you pay the subscription and then you're able to download and play any of the games that they have in their catalog. So it's got like the Halo collection and like a, a bunch of the Gears of War games or maybe all the Gears of War games, I don't know. They got like Frostpunk and Dishonored 2 and and my friend Pedro and all these Subnautica like all these games and I'm like that looks neat not gonna pay 30 bucks for it but like now I don't have to <laughs> yeah no that's actually that's actually pretty cool yeah it's a it's a great time I've been just like playing a new game every couple of hours I'm not getting anywhere <laughs> in any of them but I'm having a blast I know like that's the big problem with like having like access to so many games is like oh I'll play this for a little bit oh this is really cool never come back yeah, to it not once <laughs> Steam just added a thing the other day. I haven't tried it, but it um you, so like Steam on the the front page has had for a long time like it'll recommend you games that they have that are based on your interests. Oh sure sure. But now now they just added to libraries like here's games that you might be interested in that you already own you just haven't played. Yet. <laughs> That's that feels like a real call out because they I mean like I have like probably a couple hundred games that I got through like Humble Bundle or whatever. But like Exactly. Yeah, it's like it's all just these deals where you buy like twenty games for twelve dollars and you never fucking look at them. But like there's people with, you know, literal <laughs> thousands of games on, on their, you know, their Steam library that they, they don't even know what they have. Like either I shit, with my couple hundred games I look at it and I'm like, Oh fuck, I own this? Oh shit, I guess I'll play that eventually and then I don't. So like Yeah, exactly. That's that's both a good thing and also like I I'd, I'd feel a little indignant if <laughs> if I got a recommendation for a game I already owned. It's a weird thing like like I said like I'd been playing free to play games for a little bit mm -hmm. and I own like I because like like you said with Humble Bundles and stuff like I own a bunch of games but I just haven't played any of them. And of course, like, okay, well here's I've got like all this time on my hands, time to play any game I want yeah. and it's just kind of like uh, but I don't want to play any of them, so I'm just gonna find new ones. It's exactly. almost like if they could sell me again the games that I already own, I would be interested in playing it for some stupid fucked up reason. Sure, you know, that's that's kind of how we got onto Sonic Generations, as I recall. Was like we were talking about like. Oh, we want to speed learn to speed run a game. We can like race to try and keep each other like you know motivated. And it was it was pretty much just like, well, what game do we have? And we just kind of landed on that. Oh, we both already own this. I didn't know I owned it. Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been able to beat your time, by the way. I'm very sad about it. Yes. Um, I haven't. I've. I've. I still have it on my fucking desktop. Like it. T like it tempts me every time I start on my computer. <laughs> like, you know, I could play a little bit of Sonic Generations. Just play Green Hill Zone because I can't beat any other fucking level. <laughs> well, you can't. I mean, I'm sure you could like beat the level. Like it's not a terribly difficult yeah. game. But like you know, the the speed strats are always way more difficult. God, they're and the fucking modern Sonic ones are so hard. Like. The second level has you doing this, like, like coin. I have, I, I'm all right. Forgive me, Sonic Master. But <laughs> the 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 light dash or whatever, where you go through the the rings, yeah, like the in a row. Okay. Light speed dash. You were pretty close. Light speed dash. Um, like I, there's a there's a there's like a trick that you have to do that involves doing that, and I just like, I get it like one in ten times, and I'm like, I fucking hate this. <laughs> I, I hate this so much. That has been a janky mechanic since it was introduced. Like you'd think. You know, Sonic Sonic Adventure One came out in like what ninety nine, and Something you know like this that. generation came out in twenty eleven. Like you'd think at some point they would have figured out how to make that fucking mechanic work, but absolutely not. No, it sucks every time. <laughs> the The big difference, like the the thing they have improved though, is in in Sonic Adventure you had to actually charge a spin dash for five seconds before you did one, and then oh. it would kill you. You'd, you'd, charge, you'd stop what you were doing, charge a spin dash for five seconds, and then just dash right off a cliff and die. That's how far we've come. That sucks so bad. 
So market improvement in that it's going to kill you, but at least you save those five seconds. <laughs> oh man, that's ki- that's killing me right now. <laughs> oh, God, I love man. Sonic so much. <laughs> Oh man. Um oh. yeah. I'm like I, I was going to be like, "Oh yeah, here's another thing I was playing," but like I've been playing so many games it's just a blur at this point. I I know. I know what you mean. You know, I got I got into um I'm not a big JRPG fan and mm-hmm. but for some reason I was watching I I wanted something in the background while I was doing homework and I got nostalgic and I put on a long play of Final Fantasy 10. Oh really? And yeah, and I was like, and I was watching it, and I was like, really getting into it. I was like, this is really cool. And I got, I got about four or five hours in, and I kept, I had to stop watching it because I was getting so distracted from. Because again, I just wanted this background thing, but the guy who was playing it just kept making all these insane choices, like never using overdrives, like even in times where it's like you should just use. You're in a boss fight. Use the overdrive. Um, interesting so it was like that and then he was like taking characters he was i don't understand the expert sphere grid so i may be talking out my ass but sure. uh he was just taking characters into weird places like he was taking like Orin into uh like waka's thing and i was like well that seems weird and then he was taking kamari into lulu's area and i was like you don't make kamari a black mage i learned that the hard way like right uh, and I, I I couldn't keep watching it, so I I went and the game was on sale. I bought it and I've been playing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so upset. That's absurd. That that's what got you into it. That's <laughs> you got into JRPGs because somebody was playing it like just so. Well, I don't want to say poorly. That bro- that guy probably knows way more than I do. But like, that someone was just playing it so fucking weird that like you were like, no no no, I have to do this right now. Like, yeah, like I can't. Like I was gonna save it for summer, and I was like, no, I like I have to play this game. Like, <laughs> I can't. Uh, but I've been playing that, and I've been really enjoying that. Um, Ten's a good time. Way more than I thought I would, and I it, maybe it's nostalgia or something. But like, I'm not hating JRPGs as much as I usually do. Ah, huh? well, shit. Yeah. I mean, if they ever got a Dragon Quest Eleven Definitive Edition on the PC, I'd I'd highly recommend picking that up. I think you'd have a blast with it. Yeah, no, we'll we'll see if this this turns a new leaf for me. I mean, yeah. I'm becoming more tolerant, you know. Like last time, I talked about all the anime and things that I'm, you know, I'm full of rage and hate. And maybe now <laughs> that Doom Eternal doesn't work on my computer, I'm just like, you know what? Maybe it's okay to like things. You had to, you just had to hang up the axe, you know. You just <laughs> sometimes you just gotta go ha 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 really loud, like in Final <laughs> Fantasy X. I love that. I love that scene, by the way. I- I, I like that scene, like, not even as an ironic thing, I'm just like, you know, it's it's this it's this weird way of conveying, like, Titus's like, you know, kind of complex emotions at the, at the situation, but it comes off as really goofy and weird and, like, kind of cringy. But, like, every once in a while I think of that scene and then I'll think of the, um, Titus's voice actor, I think it was, who tried to defend it. Like why he did it like that, and he's like, "Well, no, you don't actually understand. It's because it's because Titus is feeling these things, and he's trying to communicate that." It's like, "No, I know exactly what the fuck is going on. That sounded weird as shit, my guy. Like I had to mute that on because I was playing it as a kid in my family's living room, and I was like, I don't want my mom coming in and asking what I'm playing right now because this is fucking weird. <laughs> it's not even like a porn thing. I'm just like, I don't want anybody to hear this weird ass laugh, so I had to mute the TV." <laughs> I, I remember this is this is slightly related. I remember there's the there's a part later in the game. It's like the romantic scene between Yuna and Titus. Yeah, Titus. they're like underwater. They yeah, got the Tsuteki Dane playing and stuff like that. Yeah, and you can't skip cutscenes in that game. Like even today nope. you still can't skip cutscenes really. In the in the Steam version you can't? You can skip the the good graphic cutscenes, but so in theory you'd be able to skip that one, I think, but yeah. you can't skip like regular cutscenes. Oh, the like in engine ones. That that makes sense. But I remember reading in the guidebook that that scene was coming and then like having to plan out when my family would like not be home so that I could keep <laughs> playing Final <laughs> Fantasy 10 and just being paranoid like the whole time that scene was going on that they were going to like walk in. Not that it's like explicit or anything. It's just like what's this weird romance game you're playing? Yeah. Like my mom was already really wary of role playing games because she sure. like heard about the Dungeons and Dragons got people into uh, Satanism and stuff. So she's like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't trust role playing games, even though Dungeons and Dragons and Final Fantasy are like similar, but very different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But there's there's like a very 
if there's an ever so slightly like I wouldn't even say I was gonna say porny. That's not really a word, but there, there's not. <laughs> I, it's like a vi- ever so slightly like lewd quality to every Final Fantasy. I was gonna say every Final Fantasy seven and on, but kind of all of them. If you look at the, like you know, the art and stuff like that, like there's just it's it's totally normal like high fantasy or like techno fantasy kind of thing, and then like. You got Tifa with just, like, gigantic boobs, and, like, you know, the camera's <laughs> gonna zoom right on him at weird times. Same thing with Lulu in uh, in 10. Like, there's so many yeah. shots where, like, the camera dives into her cleavage to start a fight or something. <laughs> uh, just all these things, and it's like, you were, you're so close to being family-friendly, but you just had to throw in this one thing to make me look over my shoulder constantly Why right. you do that. At least in Final Fantasy 15, it's just Gladio and his humongous man tits. Like, he's just... <laughs> He's so goddamn buff and sexy and rugged and like you know now I'm now I got to look over my shoulder for a whole different reason. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, because it is like Lulu's like I I just forgotten about her like victory animation, but like everybody else like I flip my sword or I do like a cool arm pump and she just like bends over. It's like yeah, <laughs> like that's what are you doing? And it's not even like because you know her weapon is a Moogle that like you know if she if you have her attack which she probably shouldn't, but like you know if you have her attack she puts the Moogle on the ground it runs up and like punches its mm-hmm. weak little fist into something. Like you'd think at least they would try to like make a, a canon reason as to why. Why she does that like oh she's bending down to, to to tell the moogle he did a good job but no she's not even fucking looking at it she's looking at the camera like check this out <laughs> look at that it's pretty low cut huh yeah <laughs> and same yeah. thing in seven like you know when when tifa wins a fight like you know when she's in the party and you win a fight like she just kind of stretches really far back oh, with her yeah. hands behind her <laughs> just to like make her you know boobs as pronounced as possible oh i totally forgot about that one yeah yeah, it it it's it's one of those things where it's like like I go by hentai pizza lord on Twitter. Like obviously, like I'm not like a, a, averse to like you know pornographic and uh, porny situations, but certainly, it, like give me a reason why it's happening. I don't know. It's <laughs> like I I'm, I I I have questions, but whatever. It's still a good time. Yeah. <laughs> so like just uh, just you know own it if you're gonna do that. Like don't. Don't pretend this is something that's not play coy. Like, what are you talking about? She's just wearing a tank top. Like, no, you know what you did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Tifa's design in the remake is really good. B- big fan. Yeah, I've heard good things about the the remake so far. Like, everybody, everybody I talk to who's playing it seems to have a different issue with the game. But overall, yeah. everyone likes it. Uh, the ending, as I understand, really goes off the rails. I, um, funny because, like, I've been playing all these, you know, kind of mid games, but, like, uh, Tyler bought the, the remake shortly after it came out, and, you know, I, I sat down and I played the first, like, couple hours, and I was like, this is really good. Wow, they really nailed it. I have not gone back to it since. <laughs> this was weeks ago at this point. Man, that's always the thing that, like, blows my mind about, like, entertainment or, like, just the way, like, our brains work. It's like, You'll, you'll watch a show, or you'll... Like, how many... An, like, we're going to talk about so many anime on this podcast that... Yeah. like And this conversation is going to come up a million times, where I started a show, it was absolutely incredible, I loved every second of it, and I only watched the first three episodes and never went back to it. Yeah, you still haven't gotten very far in Hunter x Hunter. Uh, I did watch a bit more of it. Oh, did you? So, I'm, I'm actually... <laughs> it's so funny, sorry. I've been watching more of that one, um... But I had to stop watching it. I just wrapped up school on, uh, like, last week sometime. Oh, okay. And uh, I, I put it on in the background. I was watching the dub, and I was like, yeah, this will be good background stuff. Like, I can watch it. And uh, I kept getting distracted because I was totally into the show. Sure. Um, that, that's okay. You're making some progress. That's good. Yeah, I wrapped up, like, the Heaven Tournament arc. Oh, nice. Like, I just what? finished that, and it was sick. That, the Gone versus Hisoka fight was just magical wasn't it so good yeah God. that was another case where i was like oh like this will be cool but like i could play video games at the same time and it's like nope video game you're on pause like i'm watching this <laughs> fight yeah yeah it's it's the kind of shonen anime that'll actually get you to turn off whatever else you're doing because like yeah if you're watching like naruto or bleach or you know any of those like even even my hero sometimes like you mm-hmm. know I'm, I'm gonna have my phone in my hand or like i'm gonna be playing a game on the switch and i'll look up if it's interesting enough well like hunter hunter had me like actually invested the whole way through i know i never thought like i talked about last time how i thought all anime was like 
like Naruto, where it's like, oh man, like his power level's insane, and all these other things, and it's like, <laughs> um, you know, and it's just characters talking and not actually fighting. And they, they, there's like two episodes where they talk about like how Nen works and how Hisoka, like he used his arms as, and he used his Nen to like staple things to walls, and he's got these gummy hands, and it's like, and I'm just like enraptured, like yes, tell yeah. me more about how he's using his magic space powers to do weird <laughs> things. That's that's like the thing I love most about like you know because every every shonen anime has its like power system right like Bleach has the you know the the soul power and the zanpaktos and like Naruto mm-hmm. has its ninjutsu etc cetera, etc cetera. like uh, Hunter Hunter has its Nen system and while it's complex and kind of abstract as shit like they make rules and for the most part they stand by them and if they break one of those rules there's a very good reason for it like they even have a system of rules set around how they break the rules which you'll encounter later I think in, in the next arc probably that to me is a good sign of like an anime doing things pretty well where it's like the power level can keep increasing but there's still like a system to it so yeah kind of wrap your brain around what's happening it makes those big moments like you know the the quote-unquote super saiyan moments like that much more impactful because it's not just like yeah we watch goku do push-ups for 30 episodes and like now his hair is yellow you know like it's it's not just a matter of like earning it it's the creator like showing you like wow you didn't you didn't think about it like this did you well here it is you know like yeah exactly it's smart instead of just being like, wow, he, he trained really hard to do that, which is also sick. Don't get me wrong. I talk a lot of shit about Dragon Ball. I really like Dragon Ball. It beats two things where it's like, it, it, it makes sense why the thing is happening, where it's like, you know, like, oh, he out like I like shows where somebody like trains and they outsmart their opponent. And like because they like bettered themselves or because they came up with a plan, they're able to beat the bad guy as opposed yeah. to like, oh, he just yelled really hard and it kicked in his yell power and his yell power let him defeat the bad guy. Like there's mm-hmm. so much like fantasy stuff where it's just like, I'm casting a spell. The spell's not strong enough. Ah! Oh, this felt <laughs> strong enough, and you killed the Elder God. Okay, yeah. cool. You, you done did it. Your stats were good enough. Good job. Uh, but no, Naruto, Hunter, cool. Naruto at its at its top had some good, like, outsmart moments. Because that's what it was about, uh, about, like, the original series. That's mostly what it was about, was, like, you know, they're ninja. They're crafty. Like, they got to find sneaky ways to beat each other. And then, you know, afterwards, it got really, like, power scaly. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's, there's also certainly a limit to it. But though... Uh, I gotta say, I've, I've, well, I haven't watched any of, I haven't watched a ton of Dragon Ball in general, but, like, Mm -hmm. I I, I am impressed when I hear recaps from, like, people about how the new Dragon Ball Z, whatever it's called, show, like, how Uh, they've increased. Dragon Ball Super. Dragon Ball Super. How they've just, like, continued to increase the power level. It's like, well, Goku's, (laughs) like, this incredibly powerful godlike beam. What do you do? Well, you have them fight alternate dimensions where, like, here's the physical embodiment of death from another dimension. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, like, that's that's how you continue to increase it. Like, eventually, he's going to, like, kill the animators or something, you know? Well, the funny thing is, like, in, in Dragon Ball Super, like, in the first, you know, dozen episodes or so, Goku does literally become a god. <laughs> right, because he turns and then he learns. God. Well, yeah, he, he, he turns Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Oh, no, wait, no, no. He turns Super Saiyan God, and then later, with with the blue hair, he becomes Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. He's the Super Saiyan version of the Super Saiyan God. <laughs> I mean, that's how you got to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, God bless them. They just keep going. You think they hit the top, and they just keep, you know, break yeah. on through. Yeah, and as long as it's making money, it's like, it, assuming the world doesn't end from coronavirus, um, sure. we're... They're just going to keep making money, and they're going to have to keep figuring out ways to increase the power level. And I'm I'm here for it. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to so watch the it. show, but I want to hear about it. So I'm I'm going to keep doing what I have been doing. You know what? No, that's not fair. I watched like half of Super. I actually I dropped out right before the second tournament of power, which is where it's supposed to get really good. Like I, he beat Goku Black, I think, and I was like, I'm done. But um. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing, which is watch a few of the clips of the fights on YouTube and then, like, listen to somebody talk about it for 20 minutes at a time. And that's <laughs> that's going to be how I engage with it. Same way that I engaged with, you know, a lot of Naruto before actually downloading the manga. But that's just, it's, there's too many damn episodes and I have a job now, you know? And, you know, we should probably get into it, but, like, we're filling that void with our with our podcast where there are people out there who want to know about a show. But they're not gonna watch the show. They're gonna listen to a couple couple nerds just talk about it instead. Uh, you know what? I was having this little last thing before we get onto it. But like, um, I was having this sort of—I wouldn't even call it a crisis. I was just kind of thinking, like, yeah. I mean, 
obviously neither of us have a huge stake in this podcast. Like we're not expecting to make like a shit ton of Patreon money or anything like that. Um, we'd have to make a Patreon first for one thing, but that's um, a big one. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good step one there. But, um, yeah, I mean, neither of us expect this to, like, blow up or even for most anybody to listen to it. Um, right. You know, it's, it's very much more for us. But even then, I was kind of thinking, like, you know, we don't serve a lot of a purpose here talking about shows that, like, chances are the person who's <laughs> statistically the person who's listening to it hasn't seen, right? But, like, right. that kind of makes me feel a little better about it because it's like, yeah, like, even if it doesn't get somebody to watch the show we're talking about it, maybe they get a little something out of, like, oh, okay, I was I was curious about it. Now I know a little more, and now I know whether or not I want to. So you know what, we're providing a good service here. Yeah, no, there definitely is like with how on top of you have to be for just have conversations with people, right? Like you mm-hmm. need to know about so many different shows and whatnot. I mean, back in the old world when you you could hang out with people in reality, like you <laughs> like everybody would talk about like, oh, did you see this new show? Did you see this new thing? Uh, back when new things were being invented, other than podcasts. Um, and now yeah and that's you know and i i think people will come back to this and then they'll know like oh this is what keep your hands off isokin was all about now i can have cool conversations with people yeah (laughs) now we can now they can know a little bit more that's i mean shit that's how i did for you know everything everything bleach related past the second season because boy that that fell off a cliff but you know i still know (laughs) enough to talk to somebody about it because i listen to other people talk about it yeah, you can keep the you can keep the conversations going at an anime convention, whether you should or not. Exactly. A lot of the time, I don't mean to get into those conversations, but <laughs> so it goes. There's no getting away from them. Yeah, you know, you see somebody in a cool cosplay, you ask them a thing, and then an hour and a half later, you're like, okay, all right. But I didn't expect to sign up for the college class on this, but okay, cool. Yeah, no, I did. I, it's good to know those Naruto fan theories. I do see how it connects with the Rick and Morty universe now. Thank you. <laughs> If that is a fan theory somewhere, I really want to hear it. I mean, everything's a fan theory. <laughs> it's got to be <laughs> out <true>. there. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> um, let's get into it. Let's talk yeah, about let's do this it. incredible fucking show, Keep Your Hands Off, uh, Isaac. And- yeah. Um, okay, so I don't I don't want to be this guy, Stu. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Isaac and. Isaac Azoken. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to be this guy right now. Um, I'm never going to pronounce... Japanese words right. Like, that's fair. And, that, and that's not that's me. You're right. That's not me being like, oh, I don't respect the Japanese language. That's just me being a dumbass. So <laughs> I have a hard enough time with English words. Like this is, it's just one of those things that's going to happen a lot. <laughs> I respect that, and you know, I, I will abide by that. I just, I just needed to put it out there. <laughs> no, that's good. So it's Azoken. Azoken, yes. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to get it I, right for the rest of the podcast. Watch yeah, me immediately I, fail. It's it's not it's not directly like film club I don't think but it has something to do with like the you know the film stuff that they're doing, mm-hmm. um, but we'll get into that. Um, but yeah, you wanna you wanna give the 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 synopsis here or should I? Uh, I can give the the synopsis. So do it right. is a it's about a group of three girls who mm-hmm. come together to create anime and they have to do it through some underhanded tactics, but they all have this. Two of them have a really strong passion for making anime, and one of them has a really strong passion for making money, and so they Very all much. work together. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really fun underdog story of like how anime is made and how just how animation is done in general. Yeah, like I knew I knew that you know from the the talk uh, about it that I've sort of absorbed by osmosis at this point. I knew it was like you know very much about how animation is done, but I didn't expect to like learn this much. You know? Yeah. No, I, absolutely. Yeah. Um, this is directed by uh, Masaki Yuasa, who um, I think his his only really big work to have blown up in the West, at least um, so far before this was a uh, was a uh, Devilman Crybaby. But um, yeah. he's done a lot of series and movies and like everything I've seen uh, by him and like things even as far as trailers and stuff go, everything is gorgeous. And this is like definitely not an exception. I, I have my notes pulled up here and all I wrote about that was uh, Masaki Yuasa don't miss. So. Right. No, I, I dude, I got practically the same note. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. No, the guy seems really, really cool. And it was like because um, I, I watched the episodes and I was like, this show is really cool. Mm-hmm. who the fuck did this and then it's like you go back and you look at like there's all these shows that like or things that i've seen where i'm like oh that looks really cool 
And then, like, I didn't watch much of it or anything, but, like, yeah. he also did Ping Pong, the animation. Yeah. And that one is, like, such a cool-looking show. I haven't um, watched that yet, but I really want to. Yeah, I, I haven't seen a ton of it, uh, to, to be honest. But, like, what I've seen, holy shit, really cool-looking. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, yeah, like, he's just this director who just animates, like, or directs, like, these really cool-looking shows. That's uh, that's the thing. Like, that's sort of the, the the slot that Yuasa has kind of filled for me so far is, like, I'll see a trailer for, like, Ping Pong or Ride Your Wave or The Night of Short Walk On Girl or anything else that he's done, movie or series, and I'll go, like, wow, that looks sick. I need to watch that and then not watch it. Now that I've actually, like, seen something that he's done, like, I'm like, no, I actually really need to go back and watch all these, like, now. Yeah, absolutely. No, like my there's one called Mind Game that's like top of my list right now. Mm. It's like probably probably after this I might watch it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so and uh, Azoken, Azoken, yeah, Azoken, Azoken like lives up to it. Where like the show has like the even just like simple conversations have good camera angles and things. The mm-hmm. animation's really fun, and uh, it and it has like weird moments that are just absolutely beautiful like uh whenever they are talking about the show that they want to make or the animation that they want to do they go to this like magical animation world where everything yeah. is like, storyboards and mm-hmm. it's so nice it's so good that's that's one thing like this this series really does tick off a lot of boxes for me because like i love you know a story about somebody getting like really good at something or like you know even if they're they're like just watching somebody be really good at shit is like always inspiring to me it like makes me want to get better at the things i care about and then oh, also like yeah that that sort of like visualization of like what's going on in their heads like if you can nail that right i'm like 100 percent sold and this does it like flawlessly every time Right, yeah, because I I don't know how much it's pulling from. I I didn't read the the manga at all, but no, uh, I don't. So I don't know how much it's pulling from that. But it's really, yeah, it's like an it's a really interesting way of of doing it, and it it draws you in. It's not just characters talking like, oh, it would be cool if we did this, or it's not just like a strictly technical thing where it's like you know made by somebody who loves animation but it's really just them talking about animation rather than showing animation like mm-hmm. it is so cool yeah totally this this is the kind of like before we get into the the play by play here but like uh, this is the kind of thing that like i watched this and now like editing our last episode and stuff like i kind of felt bad for like ever having said anything bad about like any sort of animation, like anything at all, regardless of how bad it is. Cause I'm like, God, these guys work so fucking hard. I, right. Yeah. Like, well, and it's, I mean, this is like a side tangent, but like, it is weird to criticize like move, like even like bad movies that we've watched, like Samurai Cop or I, like, yeah. the, or like the room, like everybody knows about the room at this point because of the disaster artist. But like, sure. there was a lot of work that went into making that movie. Like, yeah, Totally. People, people were sweating, people were stressing, people were working hard to make something that's, like, by all accounts, really bad. But like, Yeah. Yeah, and, and, but animation even more so. I've, I've spent totally. a little bit of time. When I, when I was, like, deciding, like, okay, I need to go back to school, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to go back to school for, one of the things that crossed my mind was animation. And so, like, I uh, watched some tutorials, and I did, like, some, some basic animation stuff. I'm like, this is a lot of fucking work. Yeah, totally. And that's, you know, I think I've, like, more or less, like, phased this out of my vocabulary. But, like, you know, it's it's something that I realized, like, yeah, oh, everybody who's working on this stuff, like, they are very skilled. They are, like, you know, they have the tools necessary to make something great in, inside themselves. But there's so many outside factors to that. And so, like, it's really stupid of anybody, like, as a viewer to say, like, oh, these animators are bad. These voice actors are bad. These such and such are, like, they're bad or they're lazy or whatever. Like, they're probably trying their, their asses off and working, like, 60 or 80 hour weeks or something. Like, yeah, there's so much that goes into this, and it's like it's a miracle that anything ever comes out good, you know. And this this really shows that while also being fucking stellar at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's it's a good look at respecting people who have like really good craft, and I think it's also like it it, it like you were saying earlier, it scratches that itch of like here are people who are really passionate about something. Like I like I I finished watching uh, Azekin, and I'm like I. I have to go do what I'm passionate about. Like I need yeah. to go design things. I need to go like work on stuff. Cause this is like, I'm just so filled with energy because of that show. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. Want to get into episode one? Yeah. 
so I, I I'll we'll try to keep like the play by play a little bit briefer so we can talk about like the themes and whatnot. But yeah, um, and this is the episode where we're introduced to uh, the first character whose name I have written down. Uh, Asakusa or Asakusa? I'm not exactly sure what the uh, emphasis is on, but yeah. <laughs> well, don't leave it to me to figure that one out. <laughs> um, but she's she's going around and she's like, you're you're taught that she both loves animation, she loves drawing like backgrounds and like machinery and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. But she's also like this kind of socially awkward person. And you meet the other characters. Uh, whose names I also don't have. Oh, no. Uh, um, we have Kanamori, her friend who's really tall. Um, yes. And then we have, uh, it's Mizu something, Mizusaki. Um, mm-hmm. He's the, the rich girl. Yeah, and she's like, a, she's like a model or something, and she's also, but she doesn't want to be a model, or she doesn't, she wants to be into animation. So yeah. the three of them team up and trick the school into letting them start a live action film club. Mm-hmm. Which is not what they want to do, but they need to start a club. So, <laughs> and the anime club already exists. So, yeah, exactly, because they wouldn't let them start an animation club because the anime club exists. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, this is I. It's it's a really like it's a it's a great first episode because um, like what we talked about last time, where it's like I want an episode that starts out really really cool, and then like you can build on the premise more. Yeah. And, like, there's the, the great scene where they're in the laundromat and, like, they're starting to realize things. Where it's like, oh, you draw characters really well. I draw backgrounds. And then, like, they're just putting them up on the glass with the light coming through. And mm-hmm. it's, like, such simple, like, bare bones. Um, it's not even, like, animation at that point. But it's just, like, how this stuff is done. And it's, like, so it's, like, it's bringing you into that animation world while also just showing how they're going to work together. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> And, yeah, and I really loved, like, uh, you know, just from the beginning where they, like, show um, Asakusa, like, you know, at, at home, like, her, her mom. Or, no, it's, like, a flashback where she's watching that. Um, I know mm-hmm. I know that show she's watching is based off of something, but I'm too dumb to know what it is. Um, but, yeah, she's watching that <laughs> anime, and, like, you know, we're kind of seeing, like, where that love of animation comes from and, like, why she wants to get into it. And then you see her, like, you know, kind of grow up in high school now and, like, you know actively working towards that and i think it did a really good job of like not only setting up what the show is about but like setting up asaka asakusa as a character without mm-hmm. like getting too flowery or long-winded about it it's not like ever since i was a little girl i dreamed of being an anime like it's just you know we're here this is what she wants to do we're moving on like while yeah. making that a very clear picture in your head which i love and it's it's a good way to kind of use like a cold open and whatnot, where it's like mm-hmm. you're you're showing the audience why the character likes something as opposed to just telling them, which yeah. is like the downside of so many, you know. And it makes sense in anime, as we learn, is animation is hard, and if you can just have a character do like a voiceover over like a still that's just like the camera is just kind of panning over that still, mm-hmm. like you're saving so much fucking money. <laughs> Absolutely, so much, so much time. So much time, exactly. So we got the they're in the laundromat, and then the uh, the fantasy scene happens. The uh, the dragonfly ship, which that's like our first oh, like oh yeah yeah, which like that first shot where it pulls back and you see all the fucking um the windmills and whatever like all the all the spinny bits and whatnot. It was mm-hmm. so good. Like that's that's what got me interested in the show. Is the first place I I think I saw a gif of that of that image, and I was like, oh, I need to watch this. Um, it's it's just gorgeous. Like, it has this really cool way of, like, looking very scrappy and DIY and, like, you know, something, like, you could expect a high schooler to be able to do while also mm-hmm. being just gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I, I again, I don't know if this is the case, but, like, maybe it takes more effort to make it look rough than to make it look, like, clean or whatever these days. But, like, looking Probably. at that stuff, it's, like, I'm where my, where my brain goes is, like, oh, like, that maybe helps with, like, the animation budget. Like, not having to be as, like clean with everything so then like now you can spend more time on like the animation and like things moving and those scenes have a lot of movement and a lot of action to them for being like these rough ideas that they have but it like it really sells like the energy that these characters have for the project yeah yeah totally um I, I mean, God, I don't I don't know shit about shit, so, like, I'm not going to say, like, you know, whether it, it does help with the production or not, but, like, I, I think you might be onto something with it, you know, maybe being even more difficult to make it look rough. Like, you know, it's, it, when you're a good actor, it's hard to act like a bad actor. Like, you know, that's a whole different skill set you need to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
even if not a lot of like technical or if not a lot of man hours went into it, I think there was a lot of technical proficiency that certainly did go into it to give it that look while still like, you know, being that good. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, and like, if you watch it, like if you, ha- if you haven't watched the show and you're on the fence about it, like still like watch, watch that scene. It's so wonderful. You know, you know, the, like these characters are enthusiastic about the things, like they're coming up with ideas on the fly and mm-hmm. it's like changing things, but they're like reacting to the world around them in a way too to build on it. It's so good. Yeah, I think, I think, um, personally for me, I felt like it really picked up, like, after, say, episode three or something. Like, not that I wasn't loving it before, but, like, Mm -hmm. um, I I think it definitely does pick up in a few episodes. But, like, yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty accurate statement is, like, if, if you watch even just that scene from the first episode and you've got, like, you're not feeling anything, maybe it's not for you. But, like, you know, if you're interested in seeing where that goes, like, even a little bit, I, this is just lovely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Background music, really fucking good, too. I love the soundtrack to this so far. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to bring up, like, the I love the opening theme. Um, I love how, like, scrappy it is. Uh, mm-hmm. But, like, the music itself is also, like, really, it's, like, really fun and good. And then I love the, I get the the music that plays when they're in, like, the storyboard animation world is so yeah. good. Yeah. It's got all the it's got all the human sound effects and stuff like that. Like it's not actual, yeah. um, you know. Even the royalty free stuff, it's just that somebody like you know, there's a spaceship going and they're like, like that kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. actual human made sound effects, which is really neat. And the music, same way. Yeah, it's like, very it's very like simple. It's oh, it's so good. This is this is really just going to be a lot of filleting this episode. Or this, yeah, this, this, no, this, <laughs> absolutely. Like, like I, I have not. I've got two pages of notes here, and I don't have a single bad thing to say. <laughs> no, absolutely. Like that's. Like compared to Verdurus Planet, I I'm not gonna keep the whole name. Gargantia right. like, on the Verdurus Planet, yeah. There we go. Um, nice one. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The like like that is like that show like it, like it was good, but then it had like some problematic issues, or it was you know like it just ran into pacing issues or whatever. Like this show's just through and through great. So yeah. Good. Yeah. Like. I mean, it's it's got really none of those issues that it you know we were we were kind of beating on Gargantia for like you know even like they have characters of like varying skin tones and like there's no none of that this this is one thing I love about it there's none of that like weird shit about it you know being about high school girls like none of that yeah. absolutely none like yeah, these are no. very relatable human like just characters like the sexuality has no place in this so they're not gonna put it in there and that's great I love that. Yeah, and it's it it's like they have a lot of opportunities where they could do like looter shots of the characters. And it's like no, that's not that's not what this is about. You know, this yeah. is about like friendship and building this like thing from nothing. You know, yeah, it's about like actualizing that passion and stuff. Like that 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 doesn't have a place. Like, it would just kind of cheapen the characters. And I'm not trying to say the fan service and like you know sexuality and whatnot doesn't have its place in media. Obviously, it does. It's mm-hmm. just not here. Yeah. Yeah, and it yeah they and they could have they could have done something like that to maybe like appeal to like a certain fan base, but like they mm-hmm. they they stayed they stayed to the theme, and that's what works. Yeah, God bless them. Uh, um, let's see. So then, in I, I we're kind of combined. Like the episodes kind of flow together a little bit, but because I realized so the second episode is where they start the live action film club, which mm-hmm. apparently is what Isaacin means. Uh, it's. I don't think or it Azoken. means. Did I fuck it up already? It, you may have. <laughs> fuck. Damn. It. Uh, I don't think Azo can means like film club, but um, I think Azo or something like that is film. Or I'm not going to pretend to know Japanese. Like I took half a, co- a community college course and have watched a lot of anime. That's all I got. But um, I, I don't think it means film club proper. But like you know, mm. it's it's something you know related to that. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to disagree with you because I have a live action film club on Wikipedia, and then it says in parentheses. Azuken. So, well, then, uh, fuck score me, one for Wikipedia. Then. All right, all right, we're even now. <laughs> there we go. You, you tried to check me on something last time, and I and I and <laughs> you weren't right, and then I tried to correct you. We're we're zero zero so far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got I gotta trust parentheses on Wikipedia. I think that's as you should. <laughs> as I, I should. would take Wikipedia's word over my own any fucking day of the week. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the second episode's them building their their clubhouse basically which is like a shitty warehouse <laughs> yeah like really shitty like um uh, Asak- asakusa is like mm-hmm. 
she like breaks something and like falls like from the second story to the first story um and that's how they get the money to like make their first animation is they sell it to like a yeah uh, like it's recorded her falling and then they sell it to like a uh like a Japanese show that has like like a, an America's funniest home videos, but Japanese. So I guess Japan's funniest home videos. I took it as more of like a like a live leak kind of thing. Like you know those kind of CD websites people go on to like watch people die or something. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Like you know the lady on the escalator and all that. Like that's where my mind went. <laughs> it's I like your idea way better. Well, because I think they because they, they explicitly sell it for like three hundred bucks or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so it's like I don't know a ton about the shows, but like, there's there's a lot of shows where it's like celebrities reacting to videos, mm-hmm. you know, like and you know you like you'll see like the the Japanese celebrities like head in the corner just being like whoa, you know. So yeah. at least that's what gets over to me. So <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows what's actually going on in Japanese television? But you know, we know what mm-hmm. we know. Uh, but yeah, that episode it, it's that's also really fun because is that the one where it's either this one? No, it's the third episode. Where they have the whole like space battle thing, where the girls are stuck on the roof. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the that's the third one. This one, this one, I feel like a, a big part of the focus of it was um, kind of establishing Kanamori as like not only uh, like a, a likable and you know kind of trustworthy character in certain ways, but also like somebody that um, does actually care about this project more than like you know she just wants money, like. And right. I mean, obviously, that's probably her primary motivator, but it's also like, you know, her wanting to see her friends succeed and like make this project a success and like kind of stepping into that role of a producer, like the person who, yeah, she doesn't draw, she doesn't make music, she doesn't blah, 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 but like she gets stuff done. They need a computer, they need desks, she gets them. Like they, they need to establish a club in the first place. She's the person who goes up and talks and makes that happen. Like she is the problem solver of the group. And not only that, she keeps... Uh, the other the artists who are going to go crazy all the time, she keeps them in line and keeps them focused, which I think they really nailed that balance of like, yeah, she's got to be the bad guy. She's got to be the asshole and kind of enjoys doing it. But like, also, she's a very likable character. Like, you can totally tell why she and Asakusa are friends. It, it, I think it comes up like more as the episodes go on. But like, that's that's a character that I really appreciate as like a person who's like made like uh, short movies and stuff like that is having somebody there who's like, gonna keep everybody grounded you know yeah maybe they're not the best artist or anything but they're like well guys we have to get it done with this much money and this much stuff and we can't do that you know we're not gonna get this done in time if we do it the way that you want to do it like Mm -hmm. oh and even more than that like she'll like point out how ridiculous somebody's thing is like not just like no you can't do that but like well at the speed that you're going you're not gonna be able to do it like you're yeah what you want to do you can't do it like you don't stop thinking that you can. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's it's really difficult, I think, to to write that character or to even be that person in real life. It's really difficult. Like, absolutely. I mean, you know, I make music. You do you do graphic design, and video editing, and stuff. Like, you know, you. I feel like you probably have a little more of the like logistical management skills than I do. Because like for me, it's just like as a drummer, I'm gonna show up and hit shit really fast. And as a as a composer, I just want to make pretty sounds. But like. There's no logistics to it. There's no deadlines. There's no nothing like that. And when I've been in bands and things like that where there is somebody who who fills that role, I'm like, fuck this dude. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So, like, (laughs) writing that character is really difficult. Like, you know, she has to be the bad guy. She has to be the asshole. But, like, they write her in such a way that she's still a deeply lovable character on the same level as the two artists, which I really appreciate. Yeah, while I do have some logistic skills and whatnot with that kind of stuff, one of my best friends will... Uh, he has been that guy so many times in my life where I'm like, hey, I want to do this. I want to do this thing. Like, what do you think about that? And he'll just, like, be real with me, like, well, can you do that? Like, do you feel like you can? Like, he's he's very much, like, Kanamori to me, and it's like, oh, yeah, like, you're you're dead on. Like, that's a, yeah. that's a very solid reason why I shouldn't do this ridiculous thing. Or Totally. And I could see Will being that that capacity, too. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's been that guy a lot in my life. So mm-hmm. I, I, I especially, like, Kanamori as a character because it's like yeah you need somebody like these artists these silly artist characters they need somebody to just be real with them and just yeah because they're them. so easily distracted and they're so like you know just kind of you know lost in their animation or er, uh, imagination constantly she's the one who keeps it grounded not only that like there was i also really like the um the part where you know they go to this the the teachers to try and you know get the they get the club off the ground in the first place and the you know the teachers try to shut it down they're like well we already have uh what's it um asakusa like you know basically lets it slip that they're making animation 
anime, and mm-hmm. they're like, well, we already have an anime club, go join that. And, like, uh, it's Kanamori who comes up and is just like, well, no, they're into watching and researching anime, we're trying to make it, and also film includes, an-. like, she she's the person who goes to bat and, like, you know, has those tough conversations with the people that she needs to so that the artists can do their work. Like, not only does she keep them focused and give them the things they need, to, like, she also clears that way for them to do what they need to do yeah exactly and that's like and that's like a thing that's like not often talked about when you talk about animation it's like yeah. how do you like yeah like going back to what you were saying earlier like how do you get like the tables and how do you get all those things like you need somebody who's just running those like just such basic things that you like forget that you need them you know yeah, like somebody totally. has to handle that and and it's a, you know a much more important position than you know people are led to believe like you know you, when i see like say producers in like a movie credit or like animation or anything like that then i'm just i i kind of glaze over like i don't even notice you know what i mean but that's mm-hmm. such an important job yeah oh 100 percent. it's mm-hmm. funny having this conversation it's making me realize how much i like kanamori as a character like i i loved all the characters in that show but it's like oh yeah like they did a really good job with this character holy shit yeah, because that was, like, I think visually, uh, I think Ka- Kanamori is, like, the hardest one to, um, like, kind of relate to, even. Like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, um, Asakusa has that sort of, like, kind of kind of gremlin kind of look to her that, like, you know, you kind of immediately attach to. It's like, oh, you know, I've been like that person. I was that person in high school kind of thing. <laughs> and then, and then um, Miz- uh, Mizusaki is just really, like, you know, personable and stuff like that. Uh, Kanamori just, like, has that fuck-off face and, like, you know, the, the sort of Yakuza stance and he just, you know, she looks scary and mean and stuff like that, but, like, yeah, yeah a couple episodes in, I was like, no, this is this is 100% my favorite character. Yeah, in, in a different show, she could have been a bully or something, you know? Yeah, and, and, and one could argue that she is a bully in this one, but, you know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fair point, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so enough about Kanamori. Um, episodes... Three and sort of four because they kind of go together. Three is them make like deciding. Okay, they got the money. Time to make it. Time to make an animation. Time to make our our short film to get people into our club or yeah to get people uh, to want to fund our club. <laughs> yeah, they got the they got the money for the um for Asakusa eating shit and now they're like um <laughs> trying to trying to actually get funding for the express purpose of making their movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something I wanted to mention this about episode two, but it, it plays into just about every episode um, is the idea of using style as a problem solving method rather than just like, this is what I want it to look like or be like, you know what I mean? That's like, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read that. Um, I, I, I feel like I read this on Twitter or something like that. You know, somebody was asking an artist, like, how did you cultivate your personal style? And it was like, well, it's not just that I decided I wanted these things to look certain ways. It's like I ran into problems being like a, you know, one person animator or whatever, and I needed to figure out how to solve those problems. So like instead of making complex texture like, you know, really really um uh like really in-depth textures for clothes and stuff like that, I made it look more like a painting so that I didn't have to worry about that kind of thing. Like stuff like that. Like yeah. It gave me such an insight into, like, how your style develops and how you cultivate it. It's not just based on you want it to look like that. It's, like, you've got things that you need to address because you have limitations as a creator, and this is how you're going to do it. Um, and every episode really drives that home. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's also an interesting look into, like, how can you make something easier to do without, like, just cutting corners? Because yeah. my style, when it, whenever I've tried to do, like, animated stuff, is, like... I'm definitely not doing things in a way where I'm like, oh, this will look cool. It's it's always me cutting corners. And it, like, no, same. And, and things suffer for it um, a lot of the times. Or, like, you just have to play it up like, well, it's supposed to look bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's part of the style, though. Yeah. Like, you know, if it's, if it's, quote, supposed to look bad, you know, that is that is a stylistic choice. Yeah, exactly. But, no, yeah. like, the, there's a lot of good, like, they kind of show, like, how smears sort of work and what in-betweens are and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember if that's more four than three, but... Um, uh, I, think, I don't know. I think that's... I'm or almost guess, positive that's three. Maybe I'm yeah, wrong, though. Th- three is them coming up with the idea. Four is where they get into, like, the nitty-gritty of, like, here's how animation's done. Like, here's them working... Like, just fucking staying up all night doing all this stuff, like, hiding mm-hmm. in the fucking computer lab to make sure that <laughs> it gets done, you know? Yep, yep. And I would totally watch that that thing that they made. Like, if they made a full series, like, say this team made, like, that full series about the, the girl with the gas mask fighting the tank, I'd watch it. 
Right. Yeah. Oh, it's it's such a, well, and especially like the little bit that you see, like that they show in the and so at the end of episode four, they show the the machete girl versus the tank. I can't remember if it had a name, but uh, it was uh, it was it was something like "Hold on tight to that machete" or something like that. Or yeah, at least that was the uh, Crunchyroll oh, translation. Well, the name of the episode, so this might be it, is "Hold that machete tight." There it um, is. That's the one. So yeah, and it's like they're they're showing it, and it's such a good. Oh, I love that scene because it's it's both you're seeing this really really cool animation where it's like well we're gonna do it black and white because that's cheaper and we're gonna do all these things and it's like you're finally seeing it all pay off and you're watching it and you're like this is cool and then in the audience like they have all these like visual representations of how drawn in the people are getting where like they feel like they're in the world so they draw the audience in that world you know yeah As things are flying you know things are exploding and whatnot the audience is like reacting to them and it's such a good Again, another like good visual representation of how people are thinking. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's what it's really one of those shows that like you know, uh, n- beyond like show don't tell like you know they really in their own way like that is a part of their style is like creating uh you know these visual representations of like how these characters are seeing what's on screen more than like just showing somebody's face like looking enthralled as they're watching the girl fight the tank like the tank comes through the screen he looks over in a trash can looks like a bullet casing you know stuff like that i just i love it yeah, so much yeah no such such a good scene and then i also liked that as soon as it was over the um asakusa and uh the other animation girl um uh Mizu. mizuzaki mizuzaki uh oof my bad uh, as much as I love the show, I can't remember names. Um, the two of them are both talking about how they could have done it better. You know, yeah, like yeah. They, here's the thing that everybody loves, and they're just like, oh yeah, you know, it's we could have done this. Next time we'll do this. We got to need, you know, like, and that's such like a like a good representation of how how it is to be like an artist and like in no matter what discipline, it's like you do something, and if people are into it, like you're still like, well, I could have done better. Totally. There's there's something that uh, Asakusa says in in one of the episode five or six, I think. Um, Kanamori tells her like, "Oh, but you're you you draw so well. You're an amazing artist." And she just fires back like, "That's only people who can't draw say that." Like, yeah, that was so real just in that moment. Like, yeah, you don't know the ins and outs of this. Of course, you can't give an honest critique. Yeah, going into those episodes, I really I really liked how you have. Uh, Asuka says, um, like, self-doubt, you know, where she's, like, she wants to make this, you know, she's, like, having issues with, like, she doesn't like the robot design, she doesn't like this, mm-hmm. like, what if everyone doesn't like it, you know, and, like, really, like, that's a hard thing to grapple with as as an artist, it's just, like, when you put yourself out there, like, we're putting this podcast out there, right, and we talked yeah. about earlier, like, neither of us have very big expectations, so... Like, the weight on us isn't as bad. But I could see us, like, if we were, like, 20 right now. Like, just thinking about myself at 20. Everything I did had to be, like, the thing that was going to, like, take me to the next level. Like, I couldn't (laughs) just, like, make a movie or, like, do something for fun. It was like, no, this thing has to be the thing that launches my YouTube career or launches my, you know, like, gets people into this or, like, draw. It's like, no, you know, sometimes you just make art because you want to make art, you know? Yeah. Or you just accept that the art that you're making, you're going to put a lot of yourself into it, but some people aren't going to like it. And there's nothing you can do about that. And, and I love that that sort of like, you know, cause, cause definitely like a hundred percent feel you there. Like that sort of goal oriented, uh, thinking when it comes to like, you know, what you do creatively, like it's so pervasive, especially nowadays where like everybody shares everything they make. And like, you know, there's, there's this, this expectation that like, whatever you're going to do, if it doesn't make you money, it's at least going to garner the respect of like the people around you on say social yes. media. Um, but, and, and I love that, that, that the narrative of um, Azekin is kind of couched in this idea of like, they don't, they have not once, I don't think, I don't think they've sing, or like a single time mentioned like, oh yeah, I want to do this so I can get a job at Toei or something, you know, mm-hmm. or, or, or Madhouse or whatever. Like, they're doing this because they want to make a movie. They want to make something because they want to make it. There's no money or anything involved. <laughs> Even though she doesn't like, you know, she's afraid of like what people are going to think and stuff like that. At the end of the day, it's like very motivated by like what she wants to do. Right. Well, and and you see at the episode end of episode 6, like she goes out and she like it tries to improve the design and and by all accounts like she does, like she adds all these things that to her make it like a better picture. Um mm-hmm. but what I what I also like and I I don't know, I haven't seen past episode 6, but what I uh, what I like about that like self-doubt too is like like what you're saying there where it's like 
yeah, they're doing this because they want to do it. But like now they've had like a little bit of success as well. And like, that's where it kind of goes from like, oh, maybe like we can do this for a living or like we can make something out of this. And like, yeah, such a it can be a good thought, but it's also like a very infectious thought where like now um, you're not like now there's like all these like other motives on top of it. Right. Like you're not like you have to take all these other things into consideration. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's also kind of weighing on her. It's like, well, the club, our our ability to function as a club depends on us making something good. Yeah. And like, it's, you know, it's something that you always have to um, remember, like, you know, being part of any sort of collaborative effort, especially in a leadership position like, um, like Asakusa is like, she's the director of this, um, you know, in five or six, they start making this, this, you know, short about a mech. Right. And like, Mm -hmm. um, she's a director now. She has not only like, her reputation writing on this and like what people think of her as an animator, but like also uh, Kanamori as a producer and Mizusaki as another co-animator and like the sound guy and the background people and like all these other, like she has a team around her now and she needs to direct them. She needs to put out quality work because if she doesn't and they put out a shitty product at the end of the day, you know, everybody's going to look at, you know, uh, everybody involved and say like, Oh, they suck, but it's kind of all going to be her fault. Right, yeah, like, it'll all kind of come back to her. Um, And I think there's also, like, a... um, You have a less insular sort of group, right? Where it's, like, when it's just the three of them, they can be like, oh, let's make a short about a machete and a tank girl. And they don't have to really worry about what people are going to think because they're just making it. But now you start involving all the other people, and you see it in the part where she's kind of directing the background people. Like, they ask questions that she just wasn't ready for. You know, I can't remember what the question is, but, like, why doesn't the mech have this? Or why aren't there people running around? Why aren't there this? And it's like, Mm -hmm. she'd never thought about that. That's not a thing that would have come up. But now that she's dealing with non-animators, now that, like, that thought is in her head, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, I've actually been, um, you know, I've been working on a a game project recently. Like, there's some people who are making, um, like, an RPG, and I just kind of came on as the the composer. So I've been working on that. And, um, like, yeah, that, that really hit home. Like, that idea that, like, everybody else is, like you know, working out, like, there's all these problems that you have to solve, but, like, at the same time, everybody else, they don't really, I mean, maybe they care, but, like, they don't, at the end of the day, their, their final result isn't going to matter, like, it's not going to matter what your, um, the circumstances and the challenges that you face are, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, somebody says, like, oh, this would be great if there was, like, a violin solo here, and I'm like, well, I don't fucking know how to play violin, so, (laughs) sucks, but, like, (laughs) I still need to figure out, like, how to make that a good song that, like, you know, fits the the atmosphere of the game at the end of the day. Like, that's nobody's problem but mine. So, definitely sympathize with that. Yeah, and it's definitely it's definitely a rough spot to be in, going to, like, what I know, graphic design. It's, like, it's kind Mm -hmm. of the same thing. Like, somebody will be like, oh, why don't you do this? And it's like, because, like, I don't know how, or I can't do that. <laughs> like, like one of the big ones is like, I, I am not a good, like I can sketch to come up with ideas, but I can't draw very well. Sure. And it's like, well, why don't you just like draw a thing that's doing this? I'm like, cause I can't draw. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not the, that's not like my style is like, doesn't involve a lot of illustration. Not because it's like, oh, I don't like illustration. It's because I can't draw. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's, there's like multiple aspects to everything like that. Yeah. And and yeah, and like with you, it's like at the end of the day, you got to make something, you know, you Mm got to have that final product that people like, especially when, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm like slowly wrapping my brain around like everything that you're saying, like, (laughs) yeah, it's a collaborative effort, like you have people depending on you to do well. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dead on. Good, good point you made that I then repeated. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I, I was making a joke about the sake earlier, but I'm like halfway through this bottle at this point. So I'm glad I'm still coherent somewhat. No, yeah, no, you're 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 doing great. I'm. If anything, I should be. I sound like the drunk one probably, and I've just had coffee and water today. So I don't know. Doing this, doing this, uh, this anime podcast, and you know, true weeaboo style here. Got the got the cheap sake and everything. Oh, I do love that cheap sake. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Um. Oh, I also <laughs> need to mention episode five. Uh, I I have a note here. It says quotes. I try to do a Hedokan every night before bed, end quote. I have the this same is note. the best show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I have it's that same It's truly note. the best. I, I, yeah, I love when they, they, they connect with the mech guy over just being emotional, and it's, like, counter to what Kanamari wanted to do. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's cool that everybody, things happen that, like, there's no character that's in, like, absolute control. Yeah, it's, Everybody's totally. just kind of, like, just getting whipped around by circumstances. 
Yeah, and I, I did love the little the bit of insight that they give about um, you know designing a mech specifically because like I feel like that's not something that people go into a lot of the time. Like there's so much science and knowledge behind character design and stuff, mm-hmm. but you don't really hear about it. And I right. just love the idea of them like all kind of sitting around a table looking at a drawing and like, well, you know, how if the if the hatch for the pilot to get in is in the front, doesn't that make it a little less safe? Well, but if we put it in the back, then we can't have this scene and like blah blah blah. Like everybody has their own concern. Like Mizusawa doesn't want it to be too complex so that she can draw it easily, and like you know, um, Kanamori like wants it to be. Uh, like, cheap and easy so that they can, like, move it along at a good pace, and, like, the mech guy wants it to look accurate to, you know, an already impossible design and, like, all that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so much, like, nuance that just goes into even the smallest thing that, like, you or I are going to look at and be like, yep, that's a mech, and then move on. Yeah. It's it's cool to see that. Well, you know, and that's the thing with, like, um, so, like, the unfortunate thing about, like, anime or, like, I, I, I think it's more noticeable with, like, manga and comic books, right? Like, if you're just there to, like, read a manga, like, you just burn through it. You're just, like, mm-hmm. you know, it's, like, you are you can read, like, a huge manga in, like, an hour. Totally. You know? um, if you're just there to read it. But, like, so much work goes into, like, every single panel. And um, you could really, like, sit there and admire each panel. And, like, mm-hmm. that's easy to do because you're just holding it, you know? Like, when it comes to anime, like... You like there's so much like you, you can't like pause every frame and be like wow that's really cool how they did that you yeah know? totally um, I was talking with uh, Anthony my current roommate your former roommate um, <laughs> about uh, Berserk the the manga and um, mm-hmm. I was he was he was saying like oh yeah I got the big uh, the hardcover anthology I can lend it to you as soon as I get it back from you know our other friend and I was like well I got it on my Kindle I'm fine and he was like well but you know, you got to see the, the spreads, right? Like those, those big, like, you know, two page, like the giant ass art, like right. art uh, pieces. And I'm like sitting there just like, yeah, I was kind of content with like looking at a picture, but like, I mean, Miura is a hell of an artist. Like the guy who makes berserk, like he's got some of the best like panels, I think maybe in existence, like when it comes to manga, you know what I mean? And like, are you really getting the full thing out of, just kind of looking at a digital representation of it on like a you know an eight inch screen or whatever like this is this yeah this show is going as far as like challenging how i view media like even <laughs> as a consumer you know yeah no there's there's so much thought that has to go into every little thing you know every even the smears and whatnot it's like okay well why is the the character smearing in that direction you know why are mm-hmm. they moving like this it's i don't know if there's there's too much more we have to talk about for uh this this show but i think it's uh i just want to bring up a couple cute notes that i have um i think it's really cute that uh asakusa has the cute like the stuffed rabbit with her a lot of the time whenever especially when she's scared oh she does yeah yeah um i also really like that they have like distinct backpacks as characters oh i love kanamori's the converse backpack that is so good (laughs) the the two shoes (laughs) yeah it took me forever to figure out what it was like episode three i was like those are shoes what the fuck (laughs) that was like the first thing i noticed about her was like oh she's got a backpack that looks like a pair of converse that's neat yeah i'm pretty sure they're converse i'm not a sneakerhead, but you know (laughs) but yeah i just wanted to throw those two out before we wrapped up i think those are such good little little touches for those characters yeah, um, I liked, I mean, as far as the episode six goes, um, even though it's very brief, I like how they give, like, sort of a, a, a look into what it's like um, doing the sound effects and, like, figuring that out, especially as somebody who yeah. maybe doesn't do a lot of sound effects. Um, that that uh, recorder that the kid has in the, um, in the sound room, like, that is a, an actual field recorder. Like, I've seen that so many times. Like, beat makers and stuff like that are real, are big fans of that. Because you can take it anywhere and get a high-quality recording of whatever, and then you can use that to, like, sample in your beats and whatnot. Um, just, like, little stuff like that. Well, and it's, like, having done, like, live-action stuff for mm-hmm. so long, it wasn't until I did animation where I, like, I really got a grasp on, like, how hard Foley is and, like, how you need to have this right sound effect and whatnot. Totally. Uh, because when you do something live action, like a lot of the times, at least in my case, like you have a microphone on set and it's recording sounds. And a lot of those sounds to me were fine. You sure. Know? But, but really it's like, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it to making the, like when a Gundam moves, you don't want that. You don't want to think like, why does he sound like a, a shitty car? Or something? Like, why is there <laughs> just a car sound? It's like, you know, you want to just be like, whoa, there's a giant robot. That's sick. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. 
Uh, I actually like you know I'm uh, we've talked about this off the air, but like yeah, I got a new microphone with my uh, with my new computer, like for the express purpose of like one doing this while we're in quarantine, and two like you know being able to record vocals and stuff, and like a part of that is like you know being able to do like sound design and foley and stuff like that. And so I'm very much in the in the position where I haven't started it yet, so I'm able to think like yeah, this is going to be easy and fun, and then like I'm sure <laughs> I'm going to get into it and realize how hellish and difficult it actually is and why there's only a couple dozen like actual professional Foley artists in the world. So I'm looking forward to that. It's a, it's a tough <laughs> job. But you know, it, yeah. it, there is something also kind of satisfying about like having good sound effects. Like the, yeah. the few times that I did have, like that I did line up good sound. Like I always, I could never handle shoes. Like somebody walking and like footsteps, like always seemed like I could never, like it was always like two on the nose for me. Um, that, that bit. But. Where Asaka says on the treadmill, like that, they're yeah. doing that fantasy treadmill, and she's run. It's making the exact same footstep noises regardless of what she's stepping on. That was so fucking smart. Yeah, a- absolutely perfect way to sell. Like this is this is something basic, but it's so important. Like you know, somebody running on grass does not sound the same as running on like stone. Yeah, yeah, that was that was such a good thing. But like, yeah, but like every other time I got a sound effect right, like like somebody picking up a piece of paper. Or um, just moving something around, and it like it just it just felt right. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. this is so good. Like I felt like so complete as a video editor. Like I was like, <laughs> I don't care at all about how the rest of the cuts are working. This part where he picks up the keys, they sound like keys. <laughs> That's that's a really sad. Like I did, I did um, some sound stuff for uh, play in high school. I think my senior year, and like yeah, I was like I had to make very simple stuff like rain and like somebody ringing a doorbell and somebody walking upstairs and stuff like that. So like I put a microphone, like held a microphone while somebody walked up the stairs, or like I waited for it to rain and then I recorded it. Like simple stuff, but like that is such a satisfying feeling when it works out exactly the way you want it to. Like yeah. I could totally see why you know sound effects engineers get into that line of work and it's fascinating one of the biggest things that i regret i do regret not understanding sound better like i still suck (laughs) at audio stuff and it's it's like you can have a video or anything even animation um that looks kind of shitty and that's fine but if the sound is bad people are upset like how many early youtube videos and you still see them sometimes today but like where it's windy outside so you get this like (sighs) sound over the entire video it's it's terrible and it's yeah. it, it immediate no matter what how well shot it is if the video sounds like that it's it's upsetting and it's wrong mm-hmm. um, but if you if you get rid of it then all of a sudden it it's it's fine it's so watchable everybody's cool with it yeah there's a there's a music youtuber i've been watching recently adam neely who like pointed that out he was like um he was talking about like his gear and how he sort of amassed it. And he was like, yeah, I bought a microphone before I bought a decent camera because like, and he showed it, it was like, he shows a, like, it's like a 480p video with like really nice sound. And he's just like, because it seems like people respond to good sound a lot better than they respond to good video. And then it switches where his, where his, uh, like the audio recording is really shitty, like on a smartphone or something, but it looks really nice. Like he's on a really expensive camera and it's a huge difference. Like, I don't really give yeah. a fuck what, like, you know, what it looks like if the sound is good, I'm going to be entertained. Yeah, absolutely, and it's and, but it's also it's weird because everybody takes it for granted. I absolutely yeah. do, and still I absolutely do to this day in a lot of ways. Like mm-hmm. good sound is probably the most important thing when doing any sort of like audio video thing, and I'm still like, uh, yeah, but like you know you gotta have a good camera, you know you gotta <laughs> oh man it's so cool how it can shoot at all these different angles or like the depth of whatever it's. Uh, yeah, just get a good microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I, I say such an speaking into thing. my microphone from like the '90s that I've had for like years that is like <laughs> super broken. Like the windscreen on the front is bad. It's probably my audio so it probably sounds so much worse than yours. But <laughs> you know, good audio is important, right, guys? I mean, I, I feel like it's it's a, you know I know exactly what that microphone's like, and it's like you know it could be far worse. Uh, get you get you <laughs> yeah. a like a ten dollar pop filter, and we're in the money, dude. Oh, here we go. We just got to get that Patreon going. Get that pot. You know, I take it back. I want this podcast to be huge. I want to get all that money. Yeah. We're going to be the next the next Chapo Trap House. That's us, man. I want to be replacing a pop filter every time we record. Like every oh, half Jesus. hour, I want an assistant just ch- changing out my pop filter. Like, this one's got too much spit. Get rid of it. Burn it. I'm done. And they burn it while we're recording, but such exactly. that it's very silent and doesn't interrupt our recording. 
I just like glare at them every time they make a little bit too much noise. Like if they shuffle a little bit, <laughs> the fire crackles you- and we just like glare at them. It's ten dollars off of their paycheck. Make the fire quieter. <laughs> uh, so it's this. It's the favorite part of the podcast. We gotta we gotta put the show on a rating system of keep watching, eh, or uh. Total garbage. And Total garbage. I fucking hated it, dude. Yeah, this show was terrible. I yeah. couldn't stand it at all. I would rather um, watch... Um, I don't have a really bad anime off the top of my head, but I would rather... I'd rather watch Handshakers than this. Ooh. Uh, I'd rather watch um, Family Guy. Oh, Damn! Okay, that's damn. way better is than that, mine. Is Family Guy still going? <laughs> Probably. There's a lot uh, of memes about it on Twitter nowadays. I don't, I don't know if that actually means it's still going, but... <laughs> Um, but no, this show's great. This show's yeah. absolutely incredible. Um, y- if yeah, I'm absolutely gonna keep watching this. Probably once we're done recording here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and there's even like uh, it got postponed due to coronavirus. But oh, yeah. there is a um, live action version that I also I don't even know anything about it, but I just love this premise so much. I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it. <laughs> Whatever. I saw that, and uh, um, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I feel like most live action anime adaptations are pretty bad, but um. I'm curious, to say the least. Yeah. No, I I mean, if it's not good, you know, we don't have to keep watching it. We can just sure. go straight to eh. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I this show is incredible. Watch it. If you like anime, watch it. If you don't like anime, why are you listening to this podcast? But you should also watch this show. Well, they just like us that much, I guess. No. Oh, yeah. let's, hey, thanks for being here. <laughs> even Appreciate still, you. though, like, even, I, I feel like this this is one of those that kind of transcends, like, anime as like a a, a a genre you know what i mean like if you mm-hmm. are interested if you like even just disney movies or whatever i feel like this is a good one to give a look to yeah which is ironic because it's a show about making anime but it's like it's so good that like whatever you're into if you have a mild amount of passion like you'll feel it from this show yeah and like you know it's it, everything that they've talked about so far is uh, you know none of it is, is is exclusive to anime like maybe it maybe it doesn't apply as much to um say cg stuff um but like otherwise yeah like even if you're just into like western animation if you if you just love south park so goddamn much like you'll still get something <laughs> out of this no absolutely yeah no this is this is an incredible show it's mm-hmm. like Oh, it just fills my heart with so much happiness. Truly. I really hope the next six episodes don't suck. I, oh. I would be floored if they did. I, like, every yeah. everyone I've talked to who has seen this whole thing says it's it's great all the way through. But we, I, we will see. Maybe we'll do a, a second episode on it. Who knows? I mean, we couldn't do it in the beginning part where we're hanging out because we don't want to give away spoilers for people. Well, but, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll figure something out. Yeah. Um, Battle School Dropouts, episode two, two. Yeah. Oh, we can do the Final Fantasy thing. I like yeah, that. Yeah. I like Final Fantasy now, so, you know, I'm into <laughs> You this. do. You're a Final Fantasy fan now, specifically of ten. So, ten two. there we go. There we go. My favorite sequel, apparently. <laughs> so, next week, we are going to watch a show called Eat Man. That's right, Eat Man. Um, you told, I think you told me what this is about. I don't remember, but look forward to that. Yeah, um, and so it is on, if you're, if you're wanting to watch it, it's on a thing called Retro Crush. That's right. And there are, and I, I'm only bringing this up because there are two versions. There's Eat Man and there's Eat Man 98. <laughs> um, we're going to watch the original Eat Man. Um, I don't really know what the difference is, but I just figured I'd pick one. Oh, are we um, watching, are we watching the original? I, I, this is actually news to me that there's two different Eat Mans. So there's, there's Eat Man, which came out in 1997. Okay. And then there's Eat Man 98, which came out in 1998. Well, they, they've just made them a year apart? Is it like a remake, or is it a sequel? I I think they're separate episodes. Because uh, from what I understand about the show, every episode is like a story on its own. Oh, okay. And Eat Man 98 has like two-parters, whereas Eat Man original is like self-contained episodes, from I what see. I can tell. Okay. I haven't well, seen right. any of it. I don't know anything about it. I found it on accident while trying to find Excel Saga. And I was like, well, this is a silly name. <laughs> That's right. The premise is he's a mercenary who can eat anything and then, like, reproduce it. And I'm like, all right, well, fuck it. That sounds silly. I'm into Whoa. it. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, I'm into this now. <laughs> I didn't know that was the premise. I literally only knew the name because you brought it up, I think, yesterday. 
but I'm on board. <laughs> I'm I'm a hundred percent into this now. Yeah, and it's and I'm hoping it's gonna have those good like late '90s vibes where it's like kind of edgy, but you know, kind of cool at the same time. Really, yeah. Really awesome. And if that doesn't if that doesn't scratch that itch, then maybe one of these episodes we can do like Speed Graffer or something. Yeah, I don't that's, know anything about that one, but that's about oh. a guy who uh, he has this. He has a camera. He's a photographer, and anything he takes a picture of explodes. I fucking dude, anime's so great. Anime's so good. <laughs> <laughs> like, where else are you gonna? Where there's never you're never gonna see a show on like NBC that's like, yeah, he's a photographer, and if he takes a photo of someone, they explode. Like, <laughs> fucking anime rules. Well, I I mean. I hate to contradict that, but I mean, R.L. Stein did write uh, "Goosebumps Say Cheese and Die," which, uh, while it do- while it does not explode things, it's you know kind of a similar situation. Well, then I'm just gonna throw this in there. I love anime. I love R.L. Stein. There we go. Goosebumps, Fear Street, anime. There we go. There they, we go. You know what? If they made a Fear Street anime, I'd I'd, I'd watch it. I mean, it would probably be uh, better than I hear the Jinji Ito one was, so... Oh, I watched yeah. several episodes of that. It was garbage. I hated yeah. it. R- it's, it. We gotta have R.L. Stein save the anime, the <laughs> horror anime community. R.L. Stein, the American Junji Ito. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm gonna oh, describe fuck. him from now on. We're, we're entering a dark period of me doing that bit all the time now that's definitely going on twitter later <laughs> oh 100 <laughs> percent. all right well go watch anime everybody go watch keep your hands off azoken there you go Bam. there it is that's that's <laughs> character development right there Stu learned something new i've grown so much in these 10 hours of recording the real the real correct pronunciation of the term Aza Ken was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can I think we can end the recording okay. there. Yeah.